Corporate Democrats like Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin are opposed to tax hikes on the wealthy. In fact, they're even against reversing Donald Trump's 2017 tax cuts for the rich. Which is, by the way, one of the things that is proposed by progressives in order to raise the revenue necessary to pay for the budget reconciliation bill. That's the bill that includes all of the programs that would actually help to benefit the lives of working Americans. Things like Medicare expansion, free community college, negotiations on prescription drugs so Americans aren't price gouged by pharmaceutical companies, you know, those kinds of programs. Well, um, Apparently, Kirsten Sinema gave an interview to a local Arizona publication claiming that, look, I mean, raising taxes on the rich, that's great and everything, but she's really, really concerned about climate change, which, by the way, the budget reconciliation bill deals with in the most robust way. Legislatively speaking, okay? So Senator Kirsten Sinema's resistance to tax hike or tax rate increases to pay for the Democrats' ambitious social policy and climate legislation has set off a scramble for alternatives, including a carbon tax, international corporate tax changes, and closing loopholes for businesses that pay through the individual income tax system. Now, I just want you guys to understand how modest the proposed tax increases really are. And these modest tax increases are the very tax increases that Kirsten Cinema has been legally bribed by her corporate donors to be against. That's the correct way to frame this story. So as the Times reports, House and Senate leaders agree that the budget legislation would largely be funded by returning returning the top income tax rate to 39.6% from the 37% level to which President Donald Trump lowered it in 2017. They also agree that the corporate income tax rate should rise from 21% also set in 2017. Now, the New York Times conveniently left out what the proposal to increase that tax rate is, right? Like from 21% to what? Not back to 28%, not back to 35%. No, no. Right now, Democrats are saying, listen, the corporate tax rate was 35%, Trump lowered it to 21%, Biden wanted to increase it to 28%, but how about we go to 25%? Kirsten Sinema is like, no, not gonna do it, I'm against it. Okay, fascinating. By the way, she voted against Trump's tax tax cuts for the rich. Funny how she's now against reversing those tax cuts. Now, Cinema, by the way, continues to pretend like she's concerned about other things, including climate change, which makes no sense considering she's against this reconciliation bill, which deals with climate change. Let's go to graphic five. She says, in Arizona, we're all too familiar with the impacts of a changing climate, from increasing wildfires to severe droughts to shrinking water levels at Lake Mead, damage to critical infrastructure. These are all things that we're dealing with in Arizona every day. We know that a changing climate costs Arizonans, and right now we have the opportunity to pass smart policies to address it, looking forward to that. So why does she give a statement like that, especially since she's simultaneously against the budget reconciliation? Reconciliation bill, which deals with climate change? Well, because she's setting the stage for a carbon tax, which could be pretty regressive, right? So it really depends on how that kind of carbon tax is written into the legislation. But if there aren't carve outs for working Americans, it ends up being a regressive tax. So you basically avoid raising taxes on the rich and implement a regressive tax that affects everyone, but certainly it impacts the middle class and working class far more. Yeah, there's a trick in there too. So there is a might be a second reason why she's proposing carbon tax, which I'll get to in a second. But first, I wanna explain why the cinemas and the mansions of the world are never held to account. Because the mainstream media is their great protector. So there's a whole article, you can read it, Democrats consider adding carbon tax to budget bill in the New York Times. And they say her policies are inscrutable, you can interpret that in a couple of different ways. They call her iconoclastic, <laughs> like as if she's some sort of like, like she's Steve Jobs or something. But you could say, hey, they also means you can't quite figure her out, but she sounds very important. Okay, those are minor, all right, but at the end, uh, what's missing is the most important part. But at the end, they say a crucial test of whether Miss Cinema would support a carbon tax. Now, pause here. 
Now, what is the crucial test for cinema? If you're watching this show, you very likely know, or if you're a sentient human being, you know that the crucial test for cinema is how much she's gonna get paid by her donors, okay? But the New York Times does not end the sentence that way. They end the sentence with, a crucial test of whether Ms. Cinema would support a carbon tax would be its effects on the Arizona economy. Mm. Oh, she cares so much about the Arizona economy. That's why she just took over $960,000 in checks from people who are looking to kill this bill. Mm-hmm. Because she was just heartbroken about the Arizona economy. Which way is it gonna go? She's so heartbroken about workers in Arizona that she voted down a federal minimum wage increase. Well, so how's it gonna get- affect the Arizona economy? She was, right. I mean, she poured over her spreadsheets, as Axios said, and she's like, her accountant like focus, which is iconoclastic, was brought to bear upon the Arizona economy, and how is it gonna be affected? Are you guys actual reporters? I mean, this is the, supposed to be the paper record, this is a joke. You never did they mention in this article or pr- pretty much almost in any article about Chris's cinema and her vote, her real motivation, which is the giant amount of money she's taking from donors. If you're a reporter and you don't believe that, retire. Retire and become a dentist. Yep. You, you think $960,000 does not affect her vote? You're a moron of epic proportions. So I actually wanna get to specific figures because um, it's, it's, it is fascinating because you'll get this lengthy, dense New York Times piece, right? Mm-hmm. Pages and pages long, and all it is is garbage, 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 right? Uh, ridiculous, like like they provide cover for, for, for people like cinema. That's the Kabuki theater. And so you have to rely on independent sources to help break down what the true motivations are. Look, propaganda isn't just what gets published, it's what does not get published with these types of publications, right? And so Jake Johnson over at Common Dreams, I wanna give him a shout out because I think he does great work. I love the articles that he publishes. He gets into it and he gives specific examples. The government watchdog group, accountable.us, estimates that cinema had received at least, at least $923,000 in donations from industry lobbying groups that are currently working to kill or water down Democrats reconciliation package, which has been dubbed the Build Back Better Act. The US Chamber of Commerce and its leadership boards have donated nearly half a million dollars, 448,000 to the Arizona Democrat. And that's again, according to accountable.us. And Open Secrets does a great job in helping people, especially the electorate follow the money. So you can understand what the real motivations are. It has nothing to do with what's in Kirsten Cinema's heart. It has nothing to do with her concern about the local economy in Arizona. It has nothing to do with her concern about climate change. It has everything to do with the system of legalized bribery that persuades lawmakers, corporate Democrats like Kirsten Cinema to turn on her own constituents, turn on her own campaign promises and defeat legislation that would materially improve Americans lives. That's what's really at play here. And the fact that the New York Times omits that information time and time again, tells you everything you need to know about these legacy media outlets. Yeah, now when you go independent media, obviously there's uh, unfortunately a lot of ways you can go, right? You can go in the crazy direction and you go, oh, I heard on right wing independent media that it was the lizard people who did it and Fauci, of course, and Bill Gates. Um, so, uh, or you can go to actual source of news that have facts. So in this case, the let's stick with the $923,000 number. And you can see, you can click the link, you can see exactly where the donations came from and you could trace it. So it's not like, oh, it's a crazy conspiracy theory that she took the money. No, it's a fact that she took the money. And if you ask the New York Times editors and reporters, they would acknowledge that she actually took that money. And it does come from exactly the sources who want to water down or kill this bill. They would acknowledge that. They wouldn't, okay, so then they would say to you, what? We don't think it's relevant to her consideration. Because you didn't mention it in your article at all. Our theory is it's the number one motivating factor. By the way, our theory is shared by more than 90% of Americans. Okay, now the New York Times says the American public are a bunch of morons. They don't know anything. If they knew it, they would know that politicians are noble and principled. And we're having a conversation about what they think in their spreadsheets is the right number based on policy and their undying love for their own voters. No. <laughs> no, no, but guys, all right, so now you all know that's absurd. So if the New York Times mentions that she she says she cares about the Arizona economy, 
fine, that's her position. You should state that in an article. If she gives the quote about climate change and how much she cares for it, they should at the very least mention she's voting against climate change. Mm -hmm. That's what she's threatening to do. You say she says, if you threaten to raise taxes one dollar on my beloved donors, I will kill climate change. Let's say you don't think that was relevant to note in your article. Pretty relevant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, okay, but you want to give her whole side and you want to give the whole Kabuki theater. But on top of that, don't you think you should mention the nine hundred twenty-three thousand dollars? Or if you're a New York Times reporter editor and you say it is not relevant. You're either, and I swear to God, there is no other choice. These are your only two choices. You're either an idiot and don't understand politics at all. If you think politicians don't care about donations, I, I can't imagine anybody could be that stupid. Or you're part of a corrupt system and your job is to pretty up the news so it doesn't look like corporations rule us all and that the politicians serve the donors. Hence, you're part of the corruption. Ding, 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 ding. I think that that might be more likely. I mean, look, we're speculating here, but here's a handy dandy chart. I want to show you this chart. It was put together with data from the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy, and they show exactly what would happen to the household income of Americans. Right, and they break it down by class, they break it down by income. If they actually implement the tax increases on the wealthy that I think are incredibly necessary. So the poorest 20% would actually receive far more in, in terms of their household income. They, they would essentially receive a significant tax cut. Once you get to the top 4% or the richest 1%, they would experience, obviously, more in taxes, right? So they, the richest 1% would pay 4.3% more in taxes. Ooh, how will they survive? And that 4.3% increase in their taxes is everything, right? They're just not rich enough. They don't want to engage in that redistribution of wealth, even though, look, they. Every once in a while, you'll come across like a conservative who's like, "Oh, you know, the, all they want to do is class war." There's been class warfare in this country for decades and decades and decades. The class warfare has been launched against working Americans by the top one percent who have not paid their fair share, who literally get tax refunds when they file their taxes, even though they get to, you know, take advantage of incredibly low corporate tax rates, incredibly low, you know, top. Uh, tax rates, especially compared to what they historically were expected to pay. So they don't want to see Americans' lives improved if it means that they're gonna have to pay just a little bit more, just a little bit more in taxes. And by the way, we're not even talking about going back to like New Deal era taxes. We're talking about not even fully reversing the Trump era tax cuts for the rich. We're not even going halfway at this point in reversing the Trump era tax cuts for the rich. And they still can't have it. They still can't have it. Because apparently before Trump cut their taxes even further, right? Like they weren't making enough money then. Yeah. It's just, it blows the look, the greed is, it is what it is. These people are acting in a rational way. They want to maximize their profits. And so the question is, do we have a government that interferes on behalf of the American people who have elected these people in positions of power? Or do we have a government in this neoliberal system who only interferes on behalf of corporate interests? And right now, it's the latter. That's it. That's all we see time and time again. Yeah, so uh, look, Bernie calls it democratic socialism, I call it democratic capitalism. But if you do not have democracy to check capitalism, capitalism will run amok and turn into corporatism. And, and then we will live under corporate rule. And by the way, I got news for you, that already happened. We are under corporate rule right now. They rule everything. And our corporate machine is going to set things, the rules in a way where you survive on the lowest possible salary and they get maximum profit. Yes, by definition they will. By definition, they must maximize profit. So they have to keep your salaries as low as humanly possible. That's where democracy comes into play and it checks capitalism. If you say, hey, I don't like capitalism, I want socialism, whatever, we can argue about definitions. But you cannot argue that democracy should not check capitalism because if you argue that, we're gonna wind up in what we have now, a brutal system where the rich get everything, corporate rule is complete, and they all the donors have bought almost all the politicians. 
and it's over, and that's where we are today. And so look, uh, on the specifics of this bill, when Cinema says carbon tax, there's a second reason why she says that. It's because it's a poison pill. Once you put a carbon tax in there, two things are gonna happen. One, Manchin's then gonna turn around and go, oh, that affects coal, I can't have it for West Virginia. Exactly, so exactly. So now you have Manchin versus Cinema, supposedly, but that's just gamesmanship. They're both serving the same corporate donors. So she says, I have to have a carbon tax. He says, I definitely won't do a carbon tax. Well, golly gee, we're at loggerheads over our spreadsheets. And the New York Times will write these at best gullible articles about the principles of Joe Manchin and the principles of Kristen Cinema. And golly gee, the donors got everything they wanted again. But what a coincidence it is. And then another reason why the carbon tax is a poison pill is because then the Republicans scream their heads off about how gas prices are gonna go up. And yes, they have a couple of provisions there to, to prevent that, but it doesn't matter. The Republicans don't care about facts, they're gonna scream that anyway. And they're gonna say your home heating bills are going up and in the winter they're gonna scream and scream about it. And then Biden's gonna get scared and he's gonna pull it. It's a guarantee, it's a guarantee. So it is an obvious poison pill. And by the way, the New York Times didn't even mention that it's a poison pill. Uh, this the journal, journalism in America is pretty much dead. It's uh, it's just uh, they're they're courtesans of power. That's all they are. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, Jr. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.